All right, welcome back to BHCL Playoffs. Day one of semifinals. Today we'll have the one seed, the New York Bagels, taking on the fifth seed, the LA Earthquakes, to start this game off. The Earthquakes coming off a massive first round win against the Paris Pigeons, in which they swept them two to nothing. Uh, Nixie's 12, having shutouts in both games. Granted, game two, he only had one shot against, but it was a heck of a save. Uh, I'm Demoni, your caster for tonight. I'm not joined by anybody yet. We'll see if we can get somebody in the booth to analyze. Perhaps one of the bagels after the game. But for now, it's just me. So, yeah, should be an exciting matchup tonight. Obviously, for the bagels, we have Panda Man and Net. They have their full roster. They'll be running UP and ARAX on that first line with Tango and I believe Top Rages should be showing up any minute now for that second line. Yeah, he is right there. Changed his skin. I didn't recognize him. Face-off will be underway soon here in New York. Game one of the semifinals set to go underway in just five seconds. Obviously... The LA Earthquakes, ranked second in power rankings going into the season. They struggled a bit with uh, TJF. His leadership was a bit questionable to start the season as the faceoff is underway. Yupi sends a shot in. Nixies makes an easy save. I believe my FOV might be a bit too far out. Here's Ghosty Ferret carrying it down the near boards. He's in. Doesn't get the shot off. Yupi playing good press coverage on him. Ghosty Ferret loops back into the neutral zone, has it poked away by Yupi. Nixies will play it out to center ice, and Arax almost has a chance. It's taken away by Vaculate Beef. Yupi will regroup, gets the puck back on his stick on the back check before being successfully forechecked by Vaculate Beef. Here's Ghosty Ferret defending against Arax. He can't prevent the zone entry. Um, our ref Pluds is on the uh, wrong side of the ice. Here's Ghosty Ferret. Getting around Arax. Going on the near boards. Yupi steals from him. Two on one. Yupi for Arax in the slot. Whiffs on the shot. Unfortunate whiff from Arax. He usually bangs those in. We've seen it a lot from him this season. He's been a very reliable two on one partner with Yupi. Here's Ghosty Ferret. Trying to prevent Yupi from making his own entry. He can't. Vaculate Beef on him now. Vaculate Beef, the first overall pick in the S20 draft, as Yupi gets a nice pass out to Arax, but they are unable to capitalize on it. Here's Yupi again. Just dumps it into the Earthquake zone, and the Bagels will get a change. Top Rage is on the ice. Yupi still out there, but Konechny has changed on for Vaculate Beef for the LA Earthquakes. Here's Ghosty Ferret. Top Rage is sending one in. Yupi gets a change. And we'll see both second lines on here. Konechny pulling it through Top Rages. Hits it back for Quake TFA. Top Rages steals. Gets a shot on. It's saved by Nixies. Konechny now bringing it up the ice. Stopped by Tango at the red line. It's back for Quake TFA. Quake behind his own net. Trying to dodge Chop Rages. Pressure. He's unable to. Top Rages out of the corner. Up for Tango. His blast. It's no goal. According to the game, the Bagels were offside. We'll see if that is the case. As it may have been. They will rule this offsides. No goal on the New York Bagels part. However, Tango gets a shot in on the post. And it's a freak accident. The Bagels have scored the first goal. Off a misplay from the Earthquakes. Obviously a great play off the faceoff. I'm not sure why the uh, the replay is bugging out. But Tango off the faceoff. I don't believe I got back to the stream <laughs> quick enough for the uh, the replay to even register. But Tango hits one off the post. And Nixie is just whiffing on that chance to clear the crease. And it's a bad mistake from a goalie we really haven't seen too many mistakes from here in these playoffs. And it's one nothing Bagels. The morale of the Earthquakes has to be hurting after that one. We'll see if they can recover. 
We're halfway through the first period. Konechny drags it back off the faceoff. Goes past Tango, but Tango easily defending against him. Tango tries to cut around Konechny. He can't. Good forecheck. It's back for Quake TFA. He tries the boards. Nothing there. Back for Konechny. He'll rob Top Rages. Top Rages tries to work into the slot. It's out to Tango at the point. He can't get the shot off. Quick TFA can't defend. Tango goes for the inverse curve. Can't land it. Top Rage is trying to put more pressure on Nixies, but Quick TFA finally able to clear. Looking for more. Won't get it. Tango now. Can't force his way through. Konechny pulls it back. Doesn't get an opportunity. Quick TFA out to the middle. Nothing there as both bagels were on that puck. Arax changes on for Top Rages. Tango and Arax. Uh, may have the best bromance of the BHL as Konechny steals, has a shot, saved by Panda Man. It's back behind the net for the Bagels. In a grade A opportunity for Konechny, but Panda Man, sharp positioning to save that puck. Yupi tries the sharp angle, nothing there. Nixies drops it behind his own net. Yupi gains possession again, looking for the turnaround shot. Ghosty Ferret is there to block it. Vaculate Beef. Can't defend against Yuppie. His pass is into the stick of Ghosty Ferret. Yuppie pulling it back now. Looking for room. Whiffs on it. Ghosty Ferret unable to steal. He almost got to that puck in time. He'll pull it back through Yuppie's legs. Ghosty Ferret has a shot. He scores! What a goal by Ghosty Ferret. And it's 1-1. We're tied. Here in this first period. Ghosty Ferret and Yuppie. Have history as teammates, but there's no friends on the ice as Ghosty Ferret with a nasty move to absolutely undress Yuppie. And it's 1-1 here in this contest. Excellent shot going far side on Panda Man. Ghosty Ferret picked with the first overall pick in the BHCL draft. Uh, didn't really... Meet expectations throughout the regular season, but he has been on so far, at least this game and throughout playoffs. Here's Vaculate Beef with an early chance, a save by Panda Man. Great chance for Vaculate Beef. I guess you could call him a rookie. Here's Yupi working it behind the Earthquake's net, pulls it back on Ghosty Ferret. Yupi working it to the slot, saved by Nixies. He tries again, but the pullback is no use as Vaculate Beef is there to make the defensive stop. 30 seconds left in this first period. Ghosty Ferret looks to tally another one on the board, but he'll send it past Yupi and just elects to leave that puck there. Yupi unable to enter the Earthquake zone, at least not in the way he'd want, as he's pressured by Ghosty Ferret, but he gets a good shot off on Nixies, who makes the clutch glove save. 10 seconds to go. Yupi looking for Arax at the slot. He's there. He hits the post. It's back out to the slot. Yupi with time winding down. Nothing there. That'll be the end of period one. The New York Bagels with a few great chances to end off the period. But this game remains tied. An excellent opportunity from Yupi out in front. As you can see on the replay here, he gets it away from the corner. Out to Arax who just whiffs. That may have been a game bug, if I'm being honest. On the replay here, it looks like it may have just been some desync client side, as that did not look to hit the post on the stream. But obviously the game registering it, so we'll head to intermission here for uh, my analysis, I suppose. <laughs> not really joined by anybody today, as they're busy playing, but... Yeah, overall, a great period. Uh, I believe we saw... I, I was surprised by the Earthquakes, quite honestly. How they managed to, to come out and actually get one on Panda Man. I thought once the Bagels scored, the Earthquakes, you know, they've been a bit of a... Like, weak... They've had a weaker mental compared to some other teams. Like, even the Popcorn were able to make some comebacks. Or, not comebacks, per se. But they were able to win games they weren't expected to. And we just... Hadn't seen that from the Earthquakes this season, but they are looking red hot. Not really outdoing the Bagels, as the Bagels have had the better chances. The, they've had more shots, 
volume wise. Nixies has looked great apart from that one just horrific mistake that every every goalie is gonna make that mistake where they just can't clear the puck out of the crease. You know, it happens. But other than that, he's looked excellent. Been a, a star goalie. He's had a, a good stretch for these playoffs. He's been locked in. Obviously not allowing a goal in the first series. I believe he took 10 shots from Paris. Uh, well, 11 through both games. But 10 shots in the first game, no goals allowed. Definitely an impressive feat from a goalie who was drafted, I believe, in the late third round. Uh, past the lights, the likes of Pluds, Bagel Glaze, the two top goalies this season. And even, um, I believe, Panaman... And even Kiet was taken before him. He was the fifth goalie selected uh, around that range. I can't really verify these stats. I don't really have a note sheet to go off of. But I believe he was not in the top four goalies selected. So kudos to him for having himself <laughs> a playoff run so far. We'll see if he can carry that momentum into the second period as the faceoff will be underway in 10 seconds. Obviously, these two teams have some history. Yuppie, knowing full well the play style of almost every player on this Earthquakes team, as Vaculate Beef wins it back for Ghosty Ferret. A good play stopped by Arax. Vaculate Beef was cheating up on that pass. Here's Arax experiencing some lag. Goes down for Ghosty Ferret. Ferret with room. Taken away by Arax. He tries the four check, but he won't get it. Ghosty Ferret, down the near boards, looks for the pass. I believe he was looking for Vaculate Beef on his wing. He's unable to get it. Yuppie, a big hit on Ghosty Ferret. No call there. Doesn't necessarily take him out of the play too much, so I understand why it wasn't called. Here's Arax, unable to get anything going offensively. Vaculate Beef for Ghosty Ferret. He'll win that race, but Yuppie, what a swat. An incredible defensive play from the man himself, Yuppie. Denying a shot from Ghosty Ferret. He'll try again. Ferret with Vaculate Beef on his wing. Takes it himself. Hits the post on the shot. Great chances from the Earthquakes so far. They've just been denied by... First it was Yuppie. And the second time it was the post. The goalie's best friend. At times. Here's Yuppie. Looking for Arax in the slot. Won't get it. Ghosty Ferret chasing him down. He'll stay idle at the blue line, waiting for Yuppie to make a move. Yuppie. Tries one. May have been a pump fake, may have been a whiff. We don't know. He's over for top rages. Both second lines on now. They'll get a change. Connecty denying top rages, but won't get anything more. He's, he whiffs a couple times, but maintains possession. Goes past Tango, looking for the sharp angle. Nothing there. He'll whiff on it again. Here's Connecty. Tango actually bringing it up the ice now. I was mistaken for who had possession there. He's connecting and Quake denying Tango's zone entry, getting possession themselves, taking it into the corner anyways. Tango still with possession. Tries to go out to the slot for Top Rages. He misses on the pass. Quake TFA has a chance. Nothing there is Top Rages diligently back-checking for that puck. He'll go up for it. Tries to hit Tango. He's nowhere near that puck. Tango denies Konechny, has a shot, Tango denied by Quake TFA, an excellent SWAT again. We've seen some great defense played in this game so far, and Quake TFA the hero on that shot. Here's Quake bringing it into the bagel zone. Tango behind his own net, pressuring him, trying to make sure Quake can't get a pass out, he's loose. Quake tries to curve around Tango, won't get it. Konechny big hit by Tango. And that'll be a penalty on New York. A weird call, in my opinion. But we will see a power play for the LA Earthquakes, as we'll have Tango going to the box for the Bagels. That hit looks to be on the puck. I do have a replay of it. It was right here. Yeah, that's on the puck. That shouldn't have been called, I don't think. Normally, if the uh, hit is if the player sits on top of the puck and gets hit, it's not called too often. Here's Ghosty Ferret sending a blast wide. Yuppie on the penalty kill. Power plays in the BHL. Not too deadly often. Ghosty Ferret leaves it almost, lets Yuppie get a shot. 
but there's nothing there. Yupi drags it through Ghosty Ferret, beats Vaculate Beef on the near boards, gets around! Nixie's making the save. Vaculate Beef up for Ghosty Ferret, he has a break! Yupi wins that puck! An excellent defensive play and an excellent penalty kill from the best player in the world. Here's Ghosty Ferret, even strength now. Takes the shot, saved by Panda Man. Excellent positioning there. Yuppie taking the puck behind his own net, faking out Vaculate Beef with a masterful pullback. Yuppie now hitting it into the Earthquake zone, but Ghosty Ferret has it. Yuppie winning that board battle, almost has something, doesn't get it. Curving around Ghosty Ferret, Vaculate Beef defending the slot well, and Ghosty Ferret is out with it. Arax at the point defending, Nixie's sliding out of the way, but able to get the hit on it still. Here's Yuppie in the corner. As you can hear, the PI announcer, one minute left, Ghosty Ferret, two on one. Nothing there as Arax plays the man wisely. Ghosty Ferret pulling it back. Vaculate Beef on the ice now. Or sorry, T Tango on the ice. Vaculate Beef defending poorly that Arax gets the shot on Nixies. An excellent play by Arax to forecheck Vaculate Beef there. Arax again trying to defend Ghosty Ferret. He's driving the net. He looks unstoppable, but three bagels is enough to deter him from getting a shot on. Here's Tango. Working around Quake TFA. Gets the shot away. It hits the side of the net, I believe. Here's Tango. Again, goes right into Quake TFA, challenging him. Quake. Working him in the corner. Tango looking to get it out of the slot. Nothing there. That'll be the end of the second period. We're scoreless. A lot less firepower than the last game, or the last period, sorry. Uh, only one shot each from both teams that period. The, uh, the Earthquake's playing a lot better defense against the Bagels in that second period, but not getting the offense that they had in the first. It seems That seems to happen a lot in BHL or blocky hockey or whatever you want to call it. Um... You just don't see teams stay hot offensively for too long. Uh, the, the, obviously, the Bagels having eight shots in the first period and one shot in the second is not too uncommon. Teams uh, tend to cool down offensively because the other team adapts to their, what they're doing, essentially. But yeah, pretty even period for both teams, which you honestly, I would give this period, I'd give the slight edge to the Earthquakes in this period. Ghosty Ferret and Vac looked incredible against Yuppie and Arax. Um, obviously, they, they had a couple two-on-one opportunities that were squandered by either Ghosty Ferret not passing, which is kind of his play style. He's, he's a pretty good ISO player, but you have to respect the pass. You, you have, any uh, casual viewer at home is going to be wondering, like, oh, why don't they just double cover Ghosty Ferret? You do, he passes just enough to where you have to respect it. Like, if you, if you leave Vaculate Beef open, this is what we saw in um, Game 1 of Round 1 with the Earthquakes and Pigeons with Vaculate Beef's OT goal. They were just both crashing Ghosty Ferret, and he had Vac open, so he just took the pass, and Vac worked in and scored. So, yeah, definitely a tough. Vaculate Beef, honestly, is having a great game. Uh, you know, who he went from a fifth man drafted pretty late in the draft to actually just earning the starting role from TJF. Obviously, TJ not having enough time on his hands to dedicate his uh, to dedicate to the game. He's a, he's a college student, obviously. Not really going to have too much, not going to have enough time to, to get as good as Vaculate Beef. And Vaculate Beef, you know, I mentioned this earlier, drafted first overall. He has the potential to be a great player in this league. And uh, we could see one of those classic breakout playoff series like we did with Radium 7 um, last season with the Philadelphia Freedom. Obviously, Radium, a Malibu Marshmallows member this season, traded to the Sacramento Surge. Played pretty well this season, but not up to expectations, as I think you can assume both teams were eliminated pretty early on. As we'll get back to this third period 
Should be an interesting period of action. Here's Yupi taking it around. Vaculate Beef. Ghosty Ferret denying him. Has a two-on-one. Nothing there. And Yupi with a breakaway. He's in off the post and cashes in on the rebound. Yupi. Two-to-one bagels with the go-ahead goal. Play hooked on a feeling. Yupi has put the bagels up ahead by one. Bad coverage by the Earthquakes, obviously. They looked a bit shaky to start that third period. Vaculate Beef going up for the pass, trusting Ghosty Ferret. But Yupi, <laughs> reading the play very well, trusting his guy Arax back on defense to make the play. And he just pokes it out for him. And Yupi, you know, he's always going to score those. It's not Nixie's fault there. So, an incredible play by the Bagels to secure a lead here in clutch time. Obviously, that could be the game-winning goal. So, here's Yupi taking it up the boards again. Ghosty Ferret defending against him. Yupi working it around, looking for the pullback in the crease. Saved by Ghosty Ferret. He'll ping that out. Ghosty Ferret looking for more. Has room, but it's taken away by Arax. He hit it up too far. Panda Man making a quick save on Ghosty Ferret. Up for Yupi. Yupi two on one. Nixie's 12, clearing the crease. Excellent save from Nixie's there. Yupi looking for his man in the slot. Arax, he'll keep it in at the blue line. Vaculate Beef working it up. Arax steals from him. Vac looking for more. Yupi getting back for that puck. Making sure to protect it from Vax pressure. Yupi working past him. Yupi out to the slot for Arax. He's crashing the net. Nothing there. As Nixies or Ghosty Ferret, one of them, was able to get the ping on that. Ghosty Ferret for Vaculate Beef almost gets successfully forechecked by Yupi. But nothing there. As Arax has a shot saved by Nixies. An incredible glove. Robbing Arax from a blast from the point. Here's Vaculate Beef trying to clear his zone. The Earthquakes looking very shaky. We'll see if they can get things going here on the second line with Connecting and Quake taking the ice soon, as soon as Ghosty Ferret changes off. Ghosty Ferret for Connecting in the slot. Panda Man reading that play. Connecting with another shot. He scores. Connecting ties the game. And it's 2 2. What a sequence from Connecting. As the puck was just loose in the slot. Ghosty Ferret with the initial pass. An excellent play from Panda Man, but Connecty just getting the ping off. And Tango unable to find that puck. The Bagels can't clear it. Connecty just pounds one home, and it's 2 2. A th what a thriller we have. We could see an upset here as the Bagels were favored to win this game by a lot. But obviously, the Earthquakes. You know, they're back on track. That goal is going to turn the momentum a lot. Connecty winning it back. Top Rage is unable to find that puck. He could have had a pretty good chance, but he just, he just whiffed on it. It was in Connecty's feet. Now Tango with it behind his own net. Pressured by Connecty. Connecty, I believe, would be looking for the pullback there as Quake TFA denies him at the red line. Nothing on the shot. Quake and Konechny playing well against Top Rages and Tango so far. Top Rage is able to get it through Quake. Interesting how that worked. Quake up for Konechny, nothing there. Top Rage is getting that puck first. If Konechny cheated up just a little bit more, he would have had a breakaway. Konechny still with it, gets the shot away. What a save by Panda Man. Gloving it down before it gets us to the net. Tango works it to the middle. Tango breaking in, both Earthquake's defenders struggling to pick it off of him. But Quake DFA finally works it to the corner. Two minutes left. The game is tied at two. An incredible game so far. The best we've seen in playoffs. Tango pulls it back through Quake TFA. Top rages in his own zone. Pressured by Quake. Quake TFA. Yuppie on the ice now. Yuppie trying to steal from Quake, but he can't get it. Quake curving around. Yuppie hitting it away from him. Reads the play on Nixies, gets the shot off, and it's saved by Nixies. Incredible positioning there from the veteran goaltender. Or not necessarily a veteran. Nixies, one of the older players 
IRL age-wise, but this is only his second season as a starter. Here's Ghosty Ferret pulling it back in the neutral zone, looking for that go-ahead goal. Nothing there as Yuppie denies his chance. Yupi getting past Ghosty Ferret. Ghosty Ferret pulls it back on him. Panda Man with the save. Sliding over to block Ghosty Ferret's shot attempt. Yupi down the other way. A minute left. We'll see if a team can end it in regulation here. Yupi with a prime chance. Nixies makes the save. Here's Ghosty Ferret the other way. Has Vaculet Beef on his wing. Doesn't go for the pass. Arax looking for it. Nothing there. Ghosty Ferret behind his own net. A minute left. We'll see what Ghosty Ferret can cook. Arax out to Tango. Has a lane, but it's taken away by Vaculet Beef. He waits him out. Vaculet Beef along the near boards. Konechny on the ice for the Earthquakes now. We'll see the second lines close out this third period. Unless a team can need a timeout if they want to put their first line on. Here's Konechny working it past Tango. Tango pulling it back. Has an opportunity. Vaculet Beef pinning him to the boards. Smart defensive play from Vac. Tango looking for Yuppie. Yuppie working around. Konechny denying him. Has a two-on-one. Konechny with the shot. It's off the post and Panda Man clears. What the seeds if Panda Man owned gold that would have been tragic. Here's Yuppie. 12 seconds to go. Nixies pings it to the corner. 10 seconds. Will be a thrilling one. Five to go. Nothing there for the Earthquakes. And Konechny will send this to the boards to force overtime. Wow, what a game we've seen so far. I'm losing my voice a little bit. I'm going to get a drink of water. Ah, uh, but... Oh, my. An action-packed game. I'll tell you that. The Bagels bouncing back for six shots in that period. LA registering four. A very high flag offensive period and probably the most even period we've seen so far besides the second, obviously, but, you know, the most exciting period we've seen so far. How about that? With uh, Yuppie tying it early in the third, or sorry, getting the lead earlier in the third, and then Konechny with a clutch tying goal right off the bench. So an incredible showing. From the Earthquakes so far, obviously you don't expect them to be in this game. Well, I mean, if you're the Earthquake, you do, but... Most people have the bagels in this one going forward. <laughs> it would be an upset of the century. Yuppie, I don't believe, has ever been upset like this in his career. So it's it's going to be incredible to see. Especially not in playoffs. You know, Yuppie has... Eight championships. And uh, Ghosty Ferret there for a lot of them. I'm not sure exactly how many. I believe four or five on his team. And these two have been together on a team. They've been pretty close, uh, you know, competitively and personally. And it's very interesting to see this game unfold with the relationship these two have, both being the number one options on their team. It's an incredible storyline and an even more incredible game so far. And you just you just love to see it. So uh my pick for um my pick for OT, I'm gonna have to go with my man. I'm gonna go with Konechny. I think Konechny wins this in overtime. That is my take. Konechny, he's been clutching these playoffs. I really hope I don't cast or curse it because I like Konechny. You know, as a player and as a person, love the guy. And I think he's going to score the game winner tonight. We will see how this unfolds. For those viewing that have a Twitter you can use hashtag BCHL to be featured on a community spotlight, obviously. Unable to do it this game with our primary production man, Luke, out today. But if you have any words, let us know. I may read some off if this goes to a second overtime intermission. Here's Yuppie with a shot. Nixies coming over to make the save. An incredible glove. Yuppie shooting it through Ghosty Ferret. 
Not sure if his uh, hitbox witched or not, or if he wasn't crouched, I can't recall, but Nyxie is sliding over to glove that puck. The best save we've seen all night from him. Yupi keeping possession, trying to get past Vac. Vac working out of the corner, looking for the shot. Panaman is there, denying that short side attempt. Vaculate Beef defending against Yupi and doing a great job of it so far, hitting it up for Ghosty Ferret. Ferret passed Yupi on the boards, but doesn't have the room to gain possession off that puck. Vaculate Beef, good pressure on Yupi. Out of the corner with it. Yupi up for Arax, has the shot, it's well wide. Arax now in the corner. Ghosty Ferret working it out past him. It's up to Vaculate Beef. Vaculate Beef with room, sends it over for Ghosty Ferret. Ferret, quarterbacking the play now. Getting past Arax, Tango on the ice for the Bagels. Ghosty Ferret working it to the point, Konechny. Can't get past Tango, Tango has an opportunity, Tango's in! He shoots, it's off the post! A narrow miss from Tango and Nixies will glove it! And freeze! Wow, an incredible chance from Tango! After just blowing by Konechny and Ghosty Ferret, the Earthquake's top two options. And Nixies gets a little lucky there. With Tango hitting the post on that shot. Obviously, a good read by Nixies. If Tango went short side there, would have been game over if Nixies didn't slide in front of that. So, props to him for forcing him to miss. Here's Top Rage is off the faceoff. Can't get a shot. Obviously, offensive zone faceoffs. A very primary scoring opportunity. Opportunity. Sorry, I struggle with that word. Tango gets a near side shot on Nixies, goes for the pullback from behind the net, goes for it again. He's feeling it tonight, but he's unable to hit it so far. Would be insane if he scored a playoff overtime game winner with that sharp of a mechanic. Konechny. Into the near boards, Tango taking it himself into the corner. Breaking bass, Konechny has a two on one. Tango pulls it back. Tango with the shot saved by Nixies. It's back the other way for Konechny. His P3 misses wide. What a sequence there. But Top Rage is still defending against Konechny, who's behind the bagels net. Gets it out for Quake TFA. Yuppie with the block. Denying that passing lane. Yuppie breaks into the Earthquake zone. Yuppie out to the slot. Top Rage is a shot. Saved by Nixies. The rebound. He scores. Top Rage just puts it off the rebound. And the Bagels will take game one. An incredible sequence for the Bagels. As they take this in overtime. 3-2. to two. Wow, what a game. And the Bagels narrowly escape the jaws of an upset. As Top Rage just clutches up for his second of the game. Wow, with that that replay, the Earthquake's just unable to find that rebound in the slot. That's really tough as Nixies makes a good save. You have to wonder if he didn't slide. He, obviously, he slid a little late. The puck hit him before he slid. You do have to wonder if he could have stopped that. But no blame on Nixies. He played incredible this game. Uh, top Rage is just finding that puck first, and that happens. A great game from the Bagels to avoid the upset, and they take game one. This is going to be a close series. This is building up to be one of the greatest series of all time, obviously. The story of Ghosty Ferret versus Yuppie. An incredible one to start off this series. We'll send it to the break. Next up, we do have the Ohio Otters, my Ohio Otters, go Otters, taking on the Blue Ridge Blizzard, the third and second seeds respectively. So stay tuned for that, and we'll be back with you at 7.45 p.m. Eastern, 4.45 Pacific Time. We'll see you then after this thriller of a game.
All right, we are back here. I am Demoni, joined by Ghosty Ferret, my color commentator. Hello, hello, hello. And for we're joined for game one of the Otters versus the Blue Ridge Blizzard series. The Blizzard coming into this series as the two seed had a first round bye. But today, they're back in action, playing the third seed Otters, coming off a first round win against the Sacramento Surge. Should be an interesting game as the Blizzard, uh, in what seems like a long, long time, are not missing any key pieces. They do have Dripsky, Akuzo, Clamper, and Alex and R all showing today. Yeah, that is big for the game. It's big. Where on the other side, the Otters, they're missing Sammy the Whale, their, their second point scorer. Huge loss for them on that first line with Robe. He's been his, his trusted number two for the whole season. And uh, yeah. he'll be lining with Moncton today. That no Sammy the Whale really worries me for this team, you know, because the Otters have looked great all season, but when Sammy the Whale's not there, Roby just struggles to find a guy to really chill with, I feel like. There's something about him playing with Sammy the Whale to just bring the best out of each other, and, and I'm unsure if that's going to happen playing with Moncton, unfortunately, for the Otters. I have to agree, Robe has not looked great with anybody not named Sammy the Whale this season. Uh, you know, he lined with APAT for a few minutes. He lined with Packers at some point. But we'll see how well he can gel with Moncton today. Obviously, I'm... both teams scrimming a lot beforehand. So. You know, you're missing Sammy the Whale, but if there's a goalie in this league that can win you a game, it's definitely Bagel Goulet. So they have that going for him, I think, you know, over this Blizzard team with Mimi and that. This is true. If Bagel is on, he is one of the, if not the best goalies in the league. Face-off underway. Akuza winning it for Barobe, almost getting a quick shot on. Nothing there as he whiffs on it. Here's Robe behind the Otters net. Robe getting past Akuza on the near boards. Alex and R joining Akuzo on that line. Akuzo playing forward. Moncton back on defense for Robe. Moncton taking his time. Akuzo not really showing any pressure. Goes near side for Robe. It's back for Alex and R. Alex and R allows Robe to pressure him. Robe breaking out to the near boards. Can't hold Akuzo's pressure. Akuzo gets past Moncton, but Bagel Glazed gets the glove off. He'll drop it for the corner. Robe collecting that puck, fighting Akuzo. Akuzo gets a shot off it, hits the post. It's out the other side. Robe, or sorry, Moncton still with it now. Robe breaking to the outside boards, gets past Alex and R. Rob whiffs on it. Dripsky on the ice now for the Blizzard. And Akuzo will change for Clamper. Moncton on. Dripsky breaking past him. Dripsky has room. Dripsky's in. Saved by Moncton, I believe, got the ping off from Indeed behind Dripsky. Apat sends one up to Packers. Packers from the blue line sends one to the middle for Apat. He wins it. Apat trying to curve to the middle. It's no use as both Blizzard players were there. Clamper now with possession in his own end. Sends it up the blue line. Packers defending against him. Clamper, a very fundamentally sound player. Not necessarily a superstar, though. Very good at playing his role when Jerupski lines with him. Here's Packers getting past Clamper. Gets a shot away, Mibi. Shoulders that one away. Dripsky now with it up the near boards. Apat stealing the puck from him. Hitting the double pullback on Dripsky. But Clamper pinging it back into the Otter's own end. Here's Packers going up the near boards. Getting past Dripsky, this Otter's second line. Looking better than expected so far as Packers tries to make a move on Mimi from behind the net. It's no use. Here's Apat over for Packers. He loses it to Alex and R. His shot. Unable to make it at the net. Here's Robe. Can't get past Akuzo. Akuzo's in. And Bagel Glaze stones him at the doorstep to make an incredible save. Here's Akuzo again. Gets past Bagel Glazed on a terrible mistake by the goaltender. And the Blizzard are up 1-0. It has been a rough night for goalies. You know, if anybody saw game one of the Earthquake and the um, the Bagels game, both goalies just kind of having a mental error, you could say. You know, just really soft goal in it. And the trend's continuing tonight as Bagel 
um, lets up a really soft and which you really don't see from him ever. So that's huge for the Blizzard because so far Robe just I don't know he can't really do anything against this first line of the Blizzard. Yeah, that is a really soft goal to let in, and Akuzo has been the best player on the ice so far. Obviously, it was Dripsky last time these teams matched up for real. Granted, the the uh, last game of the season was kind of just the Blizzard letting their B team out on the ice. But the last time the Blizzard beat the Otters, Dripsky was the best player on the ice, and now it's Akuzo who was absent for that game. So yeah, Akuzo wasn't there, so it's it's interesting to see how that you know affects the second line. Dripsky has stepped up in a big way for the Blizzard this season as Akuzo steals for Robe, has another chance denied by Bagel. Alex Nara from center ice sends one deep, Bagel denying that as well, Akuzo has it now. The Otters just letting the Blizzard pepper him with shots. 6-1 to one already, the shot clock reads. In favor of the Blizzard, obviously, as Robe takes it past Akuzo. Rob, he's breaking in, Mimi, coming out of his net to make that save. Robe now. Trying the near side on Mimi, nothing there. Akuzo steals from him. Exo, up for Dripsky, gets past Mogton, he shoots well wide. Dripsky now, breaking into the slot, nothing there. As Robe defends him well. Dripsky gets the pullback. Mogton not there to stop it, Dripsky scores! On the far side, he beats Bagel. And it's gonna be 2-0. <laughs> If you're an Otters fan, look away. This is just... This is probably the worst start you could have had to this game, honestly. Drip, obviously, you know, the first... Or the last actual time these guys played, Dripsky stepped up in a big way, and he played... He outplayed Robe, just straight up. You know, there's there's nothing about that. He straight up outplayed him, and again, continuing to own Robe, Dripsky. That was a beautiful goal from him. Yeah, I, I can't say the Otters would necessarily be in this game with Sammy the Whale. Obviously, Mogton... Hasn't looked great on the line with Robe, but, you know, that's affecting I mean, Robe as well. It For me, it's more that Robe just seems like he's unwilling to use Moncton. I, I don't understand that from him. I agree. He's not really using him as much as you'd like. As much as you'd like. Here's Clamper getting past Packers. Nothing there. Packers up the near boards. Met by Dripsky. He can't stop him. Packers will whiff on it, though. And it's sent out of play. For me, Packers really need to step up this game if the Otters want any chance to win this. I agree, and he has looked all right so far. He's looked in form. He hasn't he's looked, looked all right. I mean, compared to what we saw last season on the Muskies with him in the BHL, he just looks so much better then. He really did. In the, the first half of that season, he looked unstoppable as Dripsky gets a shot off, and Bagel Glaze narrowly shoulders that one upside. Here's Packers, up for APAT. His shot denied by Clamper. Clamper's pass to Dripsky unsuccessful. Packers will go back into his own zone for it. Packers, pulling it back, gets past Dripsky. Akuzo beats him on the boards. Packers out of the corner with it. Robe on the ice, he's free. Robe has a step. Can't get a shot off. Both Wizard players were chasing him down. Very interesting choice, not even attempt the shot there from Robe. Yeah, here's Monton in center ice with it. Dripsky beats him. Gets past Robe on the boards. Able to make his own entry. Tries to go out for Akuzo at the point. Akuzo back for Dripsky. A shot saved by Bagel. Robe collects that, was that a puck. Beautiful pass. Yeah, beautiful play as Dripsky gets another shot. Bagel able to ping that one away. Here's Robe with it now. Takes a shot, Mimi, with a great save on Robe from deep. I mean, no words. The Otters are just getting outplayed on both lines so far. Dripsky making quick work of Packers and Apat. Clamper doing his job and Akuzo outplaying Robe so far. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's not that like he's necessarily outplaying him. Robe just refuses to use Moncton. I don't understand it. it. Whenever you put him on a line without Sammy the Whale, he doesn't pass anymore, and that I just don't understand that from him because you know. Part of the reason that line is so effective is because of the dynamic they have and how they'll pass to each other. But he just, anybody else, he refused to not, you know, swing the rock. 
I agree. And people in chat are telling him, yo, swing the rock. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. Robe's main issue in the S20 playoffs was he was just unwilling to use APAT or Woe Sniper. Obviously, Woe Sniper getting demoted to that second line for lag reasons. Or maybe nerves mm -hmm. reasons, as we're hearing uh, in the rumor mill lately. But, you know, it's just it's heartbreaking seeing a player as talented as Robe just trying to 2v1 the whole game, which, as talented as he is, won't work for any player. Yeah, and I mean, we're going years down the line, like, you know, years in the past here of him doing this and just never working. But, you know, he's he's in his ways and he refuses to, to change. And I, I don't respect that. I'm not going to say I respect that. And that's actual but, um, years, not blocky years. Yeah, we're talking actual years to the people. We're talking, we're getting close to half a decade here on this guy playing and he still ain't swinging the wrong. I mean, you have to think, will... Obviously, if the Otters, you know, if this game keeps trending in the direction it is, if the Otters lose this game, will they able to? Will they be able to bounce back with Sammy the Whale on the roster? It depends on how this. If they keep it close, I think they can. But if this game gets out of hand and it becomes like five one six one game, I don't think the uh, the Otters really have a shot here at making a comeback in the series. I believe the Blizzard will be missing Dripsky for finals, but. Uh, honestly, right now it seems like the only hope is Dripsky not being present for Friday or Saturday if it goes to a game three. Yeah, no, I mean, he, Akuzo has looked great, obviously. You know, he has a goal, but Dripsky is like just, I don't know what it is. You know, him specifically against this team, he just, he really turns it up and he's like really good tonight. Yeah, Dripsky, really hard to review. He plays the game. From what I've seen, he plays the game like it's ones, but like like he's a very ISO mindset. He's similar to Quake TFA in that respect, but he's just more willing to to use his line mate than Quake and some mm -hmm. of the other top players who are unwilling to pass the fuck. Yeah, no, he he's a very good you know team player. Which when you when you talk to him and you hear him talk outside of games, you wouldn't really believe that, but he is a very good team player. We'll see how the Otters can counter that. In this second period, it's gonna it's gonna be tough with a period as dominant as the Blizzard have had, but I believe they're capable. Here's Robe taking a shot from deep that's easily blocked down by Alex and R. Moncton winning it forward. Robe beating Akuzo, getting around Alex and R, gets the shot away and scores. Robe with a quick one here to put the Otters on the scoreboard. You know, and the funny thing, I was just about to start hitting on Robe again for not trusting Moncton there, but that was a great play by him. I, I don't, he really just caught, you know, Kuzo off guard. I didn't, Kuzo clearly didn't expect him to hit it to the middle there, and that was a really nice finish from Robe there. Yeah, it's, honestly, I'm not sure how Kuzo didn't hit that. I feel like, seeing him at the replay now, Kuzo was pretty close to that puck. It just looks like he whiffed. Yeah, it's a play that, you know, normally he makes. He is a player that is known to get nervous, but I, I feel like at this point in the game, with the way the shots were and the score, the nerves probably died down. I mean, who knows? If, if Robe is scoring one early, maybe the nerves are back up for Akuzo. Here's Robe beating him again. Takes a shot. Saved by Mimi. It's out to the slot. Alex Adar wins that puck. Rob getting a shot off again. We could see a turnaround here as Moncton works it to the slot for Robe. Mimi makes a series of saves, and Robe scores! He ties the game! Wow! You know, I'm not sure if Akuzo's throwing for Vegas lines here, but I mean, I <laughs> I have no idea what I am what I just watched here. He, he sat in the back of the net. It looked like turned around. I don't know if the replay will show that, but ever since that first goal, he, just, he doesn't... He looks nervous again, I'm not going to lie. He was whiffing on the puck... It, this is not what you want to see after such a first, you know, after such a dominant first period. The Otters are suddenly back in this game. And I have no words. That's just not what you want to see from the Blizzard. That's a very clearable puck. Robe obviously getting a lot of hits on it, but he's able to find the back of the net there, and it's 2-2. Here's Robe. Winning it backwards, taking it himself. Takes another shot. He's feeling himself as Mimi has to make the save on that. Alex and R up for Akuzo. Robe coming alive in playoffs. A bit rare. Very rare. <laughs> one might say, but 
Here's Robe behind his own net. Trying to get past Akuzo. Moncton coming in to help. Robe will race for Akuzo with it. He wins it forward. Into the corner. Alex and R with it now. Alex and R defended by Packers. Not well as he breaks past him. Sends it back for Akuzo. Akuzo beat by Robe. Robe's in. He's forced to the corner. Gets away with it. Tries the short side. Nothing there. Akuzo now. Robe will send one up. Dripsky almost gets it, but Packers winning that puck forward. Dripsky big, big hit. hit by Robe, and that'll be a penalty. Yeah, that deserved pen right there. That was a very big hit on Dripsky. I'll, you could have argued that, you know, it's a lot of breakaway from Dripsky. Is, it looked like he had the, had the step on uh, Robe there. Yeah, pretty unlucky play, obviously. Just d kind of double hits the puck, and Dripsky walks onto his screen. But it is a penalty. He took him out of the play. Here's Dripsky. Up for Clamper. He shoots! And it's wide. Bagel Glaze pays it back to the corner for Packers. Packers hit by Dripsky in the corner. Those, hit the, those hits in the corner are usually allowed. Mm -hmm. Refs are more leaning on those. Dripsky out for Clamper. Great swat by Packers. He'll work his way up the ice. Clamper defending against him. He'll send it up for Dripsky. Has room, but the puck is stuck to the boards. And Packers will pelt, will kill this penalty. What is... It's an interesting move from Dripsky to just walk backwards. And to see AF... Oh, his mouse has died in the middle of the power play. That is unfortunate. Here's Robe up the ice. Breaking in, looking for a shot. Dripsky takes it away from him. Here's Moncton. Defending against him. He'll send it behind the Otter's net. Moncton now. Able to get it past Dripsky. Moncton has Apat on his wing. Apat, great block there on Akuzo's swat, but unable to find the puck afterwards. Dripsky will get a change for the Blizzard. Lines are a bit messed up here for the Otters as they have Apat and Moncton on. Akuzo sending a shot in on Bagel Glazed. He'll save it. Alex and R up for Apat. Apat to Moncton. Akuzo able to read the pass. Apat back for it, denies Akuzo's chance. Akuzo dragging it out of the corner, trying to get the shot away, but he won't. Apat eight gives him nothing. He's been clamps on Akuzo so far this shift. Alex and R, again, can't get past Apat. Although that puck was a little freer than the last uh, clamps that Apat laid, but... Impressive showing from Apat this shift. Here's Robe. That was just a great shift overall from the two, you know, quote unquote role players from the Otters. Here's Robe taking it back into his own zone, avoiding the pressure from Akuzo. Robe tries the near boards, gets past him, but loses a step, and it's back for Alex and R of the Blizzard. Dripsky on the ice now. As Akuzo will step off, Robe still on now. Robe and Packers, the two best players for the Otters, if you don't count Sammy the Whale. Here's Alex and R taking it from Packers. Packers a good swat to keep it in the zone. Dripsky trying to make something happen. Robe denies him. Rob almost gets a shot, but Dripsky swats that one away. Dripsky beats Rob in the corner. Two on one developing. Dripsky for Alex and R. Shoots one. Bang! Alex and R with the goal. And it's three to two, Blizzard. What a finish from Alex there. That was an incredible. That's not an easy shot. It's not as easy as it looks. The way he turned on that puck, that was a very good shot from Alex right there. And a great pass from Tripsky as well. Packers playing as well as he could, but Alex and R, one of the most clutch players of all time, obviously has lost a step with skill, like skill wise, but. Yeah, the age has caught up to him. <laughs> the, the, eight, the blocky years have caught up to him. Their father time is undefeated. And it is. But Alex and R. Defying all odds there and scoring a big goal for the Blizzard here. He's showing he got a little left in the tank. Here's Dripsky. Breaks past Moncton. Packers will deny that shot. Packers now to the other side. Moncton's not there. Dripsky retrieves the puck. Works to the middle, but Packers is there. Packers along the boards. Tries to pass to Moncton. Nothing there. Clamper up the ice for Dripsky. Dripsky. Has one man to beat. 
Pulls back on him. Tries to break to the middle, and Bagel glazed. We'll glove it down, and that's a quick freeze. So the defense on the otter is looking a little sketchy there, but you know, Bagel is able to bail him out. Gripsky makes a good move off Packers in the corner there, or it might have been Moncton, I'm not sure. But, you know, Dripsky has that ability to just beat both players and at least get a shot on. His finishing ability is unrivaled so far this season. Here's Robe off the offensive zone faceoff for the Blizzard. Great win there as the Blizzard could have scored off that. Here's Packers. Can't deny Akuzo's clear attempt. Robe will, but Dripsky looking for one more shot. Packers will deny it. And that's the end of two. It's three to two Blizzard. The Otter is tying it up briefly, but the Blizzard back up by one off a late goal by Alex and R. You know, can, can somebody call down to the Otter's bench and tell Packers that he needs to score if this team wants to win? He, again, you know, like most of the season, he's been pretty absent. He, he's been a ghost out there. I haven't really seen him do anything. He had one pen kill where the Blizzard, for some reason, didn't really feel like, you know, pressuring the puck. I would say that's more, you know, the Blizzard's fault than him having a good penalty kill. He just, I don't, I don't know what it is. This whole season, something's all off about him, and it just, I don't know. The money, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Packers just hasn't been playing like that that superstar we thought he was going to break out into uh, in the, the first few games of last season. Obviously, he had eight points through three games, which is which you know they're they're superstar numbers. But he kind of slowed down, only registering I believe five more in the the, the following like ten games. I want to say it was. So yeah, which is not very good for you know a quote unquote superstar. Yeah, Packers, we're gonna see him need to, or we're gonna need to see him return to form here if the the Otters want to get anything, or we'll have to see Robe ascend to an even higher level as a you know, Packers did just re-log so he may be experiencing some lag that may just be cope though most definitely just cope let's yeah, be real most, def most definitely cope but and I mean I you could say Roby has the ability to step up and be even better than he well, you know what he's been in this game because overall I think that was a very good period from the Otters you know you you tied the game up for a little bit letting in that third goal is pretty rough but you, you look at the first period, two nothing. The shots were eleven to one, and you come back and it's two three with the shots eight to fourteen. So you clearly had a much better second period, and I just wonder how the team's going to build off of that because Robe as well not known to be too much of a leader on the on you know his teams. Yeah, I mean Otters did have some momentum in the second period, but that honestly seemed to die off towards the end with Alex and our scoring. Obviously, shots were eight to eleven at one point. The Otters registering six straight. But I mean, it, it just it died down at the end of the second period. So we're going to have to see a big goal to get that momentum back. And I believe if the Otters score, it could be their game to lose if uh, if the Blizzard aren't able to respond. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see what happens this period. Any predictions hey, on hey, the final score? I I do think it's going to go 4-2 Blizzard. I, just, I don't see the Otters come, coming back after losing all the momentum that they had. I mean, I, I disagree. I don't think they've lost it all, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a believer here. I'm taking the Otters 4-3. to three. Oh, Wow. Face-off underway. Robe losing it to Akuzo. Moncton back for that puck. Beats Exo. It's up for Robe. Robe has to beat Alex Nar. He takes the shot. Mimi's able to turn that one aside. Here's Moncton on Alex Nar in the corner. Moncton getting it free, looking for the shot, he curves it around, and Mimi makes the save. What a shot from Moncton, and what a save from Mimi. Moncton obviously maybe, does have that skill. Maybe Rob should use Moncton a little bit more. Oh, bad, bad positioning from the Otters here, but Robe takes advantage. Mimi able to come out and ping that puck to Moncton. Robe with possession now, dragging it back, looking for the P3, tries to go far side, but he hits the post. Lucky break there for Mimi. Robe looking hot to start this period. He'll send it back for Moncton. I believe Akuzo may have gotten a stick on that. Moncton getting stuck on the bench. Looking for the shot. He goes far side and scores. Moncton and the Otters have tied it. What a goal from Moncton. 
They put no respect on that man's name. They just said, you have the puck. You can do whatever you really feel like. Nobody trying to pressure him at all. And, well, he, he makes them pay for it. He is a very talented player. Keep in mind, he's very good mechanically. He, you know, has decent game IQ. It just, I don't know why the Blizzard don't respect him as a player. It doesn't make sense. But that was a great finish from him. Yeah, there. They, they sort of backed off of that puck, and Alex and R was the only one to challenge him. They just, they sagged very heavily onto Robe, which, you know, he tends to play pretty over-aggressive, so I don't mind that strategy, but it just, it didn't work in that case, and Moncton proves that he has some semblance of a scoring talent, and that's all Robe really needs to trust his line mate. Here's Dripsky, breaking into the Otter's corner. He'll have to be, he'll have to clutch up for the Blizzard. He sends one up to Clamper, but Apat, with the SWAT, He's been clamps all night. He'll have to continue it if the Otters want to win this game. Here's Apat dragging it back into the hands of Dripsky. Packers with a great stop. Coming across to shift in front of that puck. A great defensive showing from Packers. Here's Apat. Over for Packers. Back for Apat. Dripsky denies that pass. Has the lane. But Packers takes it away once again. Dripsky dragging it back again. Clamper open in the slot. Whiffs on it. That could have been the go-ahead goal. An untimely whiff from Clamper. Dripsky still with possession now. Loses it after he gets stuck on the boards. Apat with it now. Packers now. Struggling to get past Clamper. You know, I feel like the nerves are starting to kick in here for both teams. We're seeing some more whiffs as the game goes on. Here's Apat for Robe. Robe. Getting past Akuzo on the boards, almost breaks into the zone, but Akuzo stops him on a dime. Here's Rob, has Moncton on his wing, won't elect to pass. Alex and R pressuring Robe, coming off the bench, just flying in and poking that puck free. It's into the corner, Robe chasing it, he's behind his own net. Robe, a lot of time wasted in that for checking period for the Blizzard. As Moncton, beat by Alex and R, his shot, he scores! Alex and R puts the Blizzard on top, and that's two clutch goals for the clutch god himself. It said Mr. Clutch coming up huge. The Otters tied the game up in the second period. He steps up, beautiful goal there. And then, you know, it, it looks like all momentum is shifted towards the Otters, and he just comes up once again. Beautiful goal for Mr. Clutch himself. Yeah, honestly, I don't know who to blame for that play. Robe that was just a great a little play. Too over aggressive, Moncton whiffing on it, and Alex and R. He bangs those home a lot, almost a hundred percent of the time. I mean, if you put him in a clutch scenario. He's more. He's more likely to make it. <laughs> exactly. Face off underway. Dire moments for the Otters here. Moncton gets one up for Robe. Moncton now. Beat by Alex and R on the boards. Robe beat by him as well. Alex and R looking for the hat trick. How fitting it would be for him to score that in playoffs. Here's Moncton up for Robe. Alex and R with it. Will take the long bomb. Bagel Glaze makes the save. Robe beat by Alex in the corner. Sends one out for Akuzo. He'll miss on the one timer. Moncton up for it. Akuzo gets there first. He'll outspeed him. Robe, oh, a pass up for Alex and R, narrowly behind him. That could have been the dagger. Here's Robe oh. with it now, breaking past Akuzo, looking for the shot. He tried to fake him out to the middle, but Akuzo was not biting on that fake out. Here's Moncton with it. Whiffs on the puck, allows Akuzo to possess it, Robe denying him in the slot. A minute left for the Otters. Robe. Has Moncton on the wing, unable to get the pass away, but he gets the shot off. And Mimi will drop it. Dripsky taking possession. Robe going behind the net. Weird routing. And that's a two-on-one for the Blizzard. Dripsky denied by Moncton at the blue line. Clamper up for Dripsky now. Has the shot. Apat coming in across to make the block. Dripsky with it again. Has the shot. He scores. Dripsky. And that'll be it. He may have just sealed this one away for the Blizzard. As it's 5-3 now. That will be game right there. Otter's going to take a timeout. You're probably trying to pull the goalie and make something happen. But in the playoffs, when you're down by two with 40 seconds 
you know, 47 seconds to go, it's... I, you just can't win. I mean, sure, there's a chance, but no. I, I just don't see a world where the Otters can come back from that. It was a very weird play for Bagel. It didn't look like he had even made an attempt to save that. He just kind of stood in the way. Normally, you see this, <laughs> this, you know, you see him try to at least ping that puck, but he just didn't. It looked like he was just dead in the net. He didn't register that that puck was coming at him. And they just go far side. Honestly, yeah. Bagel hasn't been on this game. If he's been uh, in form like we've seen him in previous playoff games, namely the uh, the Cobras versus Geagles S20, we could have seen a different outcome in this game, but it's going to be tough for the Otters to win this now. You know, I agree with that 100%. If Bagel's on, this could very well be a 3-2 game, a 3-1 game even. But, you know, unfortunately, they didn't get the the, the phenomenal Bagel release tonight. Nearly impossible task here as Dripsky's denied by APAT. Here's Robe sending it to the middle for Packers. His shot saved by Mimi. What a clutch save from the veteran goaltender Mimi. Here's Robe cutting around Dripsky. The Otters are going all out here. Robe gets to Packers at the slot. They score. It's not over yet. Packers will register a goal. I, the Blizzard defense just kind of collapsing there, but this this game is very winnable now. It they've had all the momentum. It feels like this period. The Otters they let up one goal, or they let up two goals. Sorry, and all of a sudden it feels like the game is just back in you know back in their hands. The momentum's definitely on the Otters side right now. And, do you think they tie this up? Uh, it looks like it. I mean, the Blizzard, obviously, Ikuzo, not not the most, for lack of a better term, mentally stable player as in terms of, like, nervousness. But here's Robe dragging it back on the faceoff. 25 seconds to go for the Otters to score one here. Robe trying to... Get a Packers on the far side. Packers for Robe. Dripsky making the play. He'll look for the shot. Packers denying it initially. It's on the post and APAT clears. 10 seconds left. This will be the final drive. APAT to Packers on the far side. He's not there. Akuza will try to P3 it out. Three seconds to go. And Dripsky will end it here for the Blizzard. And Packers just wasn't ready for it. He wasn't ready for the puck. I, I don't think, you know, that was the right play to just send it up there. You had a little bit of time to, you know, do something there. Maybe make an extra pass, but just Packer just wasn't there and wasn't ready for it. Yeah, but, I understand the urgency, but those mistakes are going to get the better of you, especially in close situations like this, as Dripsky will register the hat trick. Mm -hmm. He'll get the insurance mm -hmm. empty netter, but this game is over. A tough game for the Otters to lose. Yeah, it really felt like they could have made you know the comeback right there, and when you know, it, this is a relatively young team in BHL terms. It, if they, you know, I, I feel like an older player would see that you have like you know six seconds on the clock and you have a little bit of time to try to make a play here instead of just chucking it up and praying for the best. That just feels like a not like a rookie mistake, but something you learn as you know time goes on, and it's. This is a tough spot to learn something like that. Yeah, I mean, the Otters really didn't perform as bad as you'd expect. I, I can't say they did because, you know, they're missing Sammy the Whale. Obviously, Mogden registering a goal, playing pretty great. But just, just not to the level of that Sammy the Whale would have played, in my opinion. Uh, you know, you can say that, but I don't think it's all on his fault. It just oh, it's part of the problem. Matter. Part of that problem right there is Robe just sucked, you know, when it came to playing with him. He didn't know how to use him. I, I don't think he would even really bother to try to, you know, use him at all. Uh, we saw two-on-one scenarios where Monkton's taking the puck up and Robe's running over to him to take the puck off his stick to shoot it into people. I just don't get it. I, I mean, yeah. you could also tell this game was close, but when you let in six goals in a game, that's, you know, something wasn't right. Even though you scored four, you got to realize, hey, we let in six. We got to tighten up somewhere here. Obviously, I mean, Bagel not having the best game for his standards, but, you know, not really letting the team down either. None of the shots, I mean, obviously the first goal, a little bit soft. 
that did turn the momentum for the Blizzard a little bit. But, you know, the whole team is to blame here. Obviously, it's a close close game, but the uh, the Otters just made too many mistakes this game, I feel. They, they just, the Blizzard made less, and that's why they won. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that, 100%. Any closing words, Ghosty Ferret? No, you take it away. All right, well, that'll be it for night one of BHCL semifinals. The both both games very close. Uh, the Bagels winning their first game against the Earthquakes in overtime, three to two, and obviously the Blizzard taking this one six to four, a nail biter in the final moments, but they'll hold on to take the victory. And both top seeds will be one nothing in the series. It's going to be interesting to see how both Game 2s play out as, you know, both losing teams kept it very close. So, stay tuned One's for that. The other. That is true. We'll see, we'll see you guys on Friday for the Game, game 2 of both series at the same time, 7 p.m. and 7.45 Eastern Time, respectively. I have been Demoni. Your caster and cameraman for tonight, joined by Ghosty Ferret, my color commentator. And big thank yous to Vasilevsky, a.k.a. Chokington, and Pluds for refing the games tonight. That'll be all. Good night, BHCL.